use interface. Rocket Money organizes your subscriptions by due date and notifies you when something is coming up. Now, instead of waiting on hold for the better part of an hour while you connect to a customer service representative, cancel that subscription immediately with a tap right from the app, and Rocket Money will handle the rest. To find out more about all the awesome personal finance features packed into Rocket Money, go to rocketmoney.com slash stream to download today. Or download the Rocket Money app from the Apple app or Google Play stores. Rocket Money, the money app that works for you. Stop buying tickets without rewards and start getting more. From the only ticketing company that rewards you for buying Vivid Seats. Buy 10 tickets, the 11th is on us. That's like 10% back every time you buy. And with 100% buyer guarantee and over 100 million tickets sold, that's something to sing, laugh, cheer, scream, buy about. Head to vividseats.com for terms and conditions. Vivid Seats. Life happens live. Bundling home and car insurance with GEICO is so easy, your neighbors are probably already doing it. But who? They may drop little hints like... Beautiful day out. Even more beautiful since we saved by bundling our home and car insurance with GEICO. Or... Yard work is hard. Much harder than bundling with GEICO, which was easy. Or it may be even subtler, like... Speaking of burgers, we bundled our home and car insurance with GEICO and saved a bunch of money. Bundling is easy with GEICO. Just ask your neighbors. Sports Center All Night continues with Jay Reynolds. Sports Center All Night presented by Progressive Insurance. Insurance for motorcycles, boats, and RVs for protection on the road and on the water. See how much you can save at 1 800 Progressive and Progressive.com. Half hour headlines on Sports Center All Night. Mike Trout homers for a seventh consecutive game. Dak Prescott has had his surgery. He's out at least the next six weeks. Seattle. Hangs on for a Monday night football win over Russell Wilson and the Broncos. With 20 seconds left, McManus off the left hash. This thing is going to be no good. It could have been long enough, but it was just to the left of the upright. And the Seahawks are going to win their opener. That's how it sounded in Seattle. Seattle Sports 710 AM. Seahawks a 17-16 win. Winning 12 of their 13 one-point games since 1999. Geno Smith as their starting quarterback. 23 of 28. 195 yards passing and two touchdowns. Completed his first 13 passes for his coach, Pete Carroll. How about Geno? I mean, Geno just 17 for 18 in the first half. I mean, who does that? You know, these guys, these guys just don't do that, you know. Um, but remember, he did it against Jacksonville. You know, he had like, I don't know, 12, 13 in a row or something like that. So Gino played tonight like he's been playing the whole time we've been practicing. That's what he's been looking like. He didn't look any different than what, what he's looked like in practice. And so that's why we had the belief in him, and that's why he, he was able to, to win the job and, and uh, go out there on Monday night football and win, win a football game. The Seahawks defense, meanwhile, also recovered a couple of Broncos fumbles on rushes from the one-yard line, and Pete Carroll gets the win. I'm really fired up for the for our defense that they hung in there. We gave up a lot of yards, but uh, it's the, it's the power of believing that you can stop somebody, no matter how how much there is left there, is so uh, it's it's so enriching for the as we go you know down the rest of this, this season here that we can do stuff like that because you believe it just helps you believe. Seahawks recovering both of those fumbles. Denver, the first team with two fumbles in a game on rushes from the one-yard line since 1987. Chiefs did it. That season, Broncos with their sixth straight loss on Monday Night Football. Seahawks, meanwhile, the only NFC West team to win in Week 1, and they do it by beating Denver and Seattle's former quarterback, Denver's current quarterback, Russell Wilson. It was also the first game where we got to see Joe Buck and Troy Aikman on the call for Monday Night Football. I think it was really personal. Um, You know, Pete was guarded with things that he would say publicly. Sure. He talked to people around Pete. And uh, I, I think they were willing to let on a little bit just how much this meant to Pete Carroll uh, with this marriage kind of breaking apart and Russell Wilson forcing his way out of the organization and getting to a great situation with the Denver Broncos. And then it's what's left in Seattle. So, you know, what's left is Geno Smith. And Geno Smith was really good here tonight getting this opening day start 
Uh, it was fascinating to watch. I'm sure we'll talk about the end of the game, which just feels still kind of surreal. But for Pete Carroll, that was an emotional win. I, I don't think there's any doubt. Given the way the game ended, I, I'm, I'm just fascinated in your perspective, right? As the guy that's been the quarterback, all right, we get down on the goal line twice and we come up empty because we fumble twice. Now we've got an opportunity. It's fourth and five, and Hackett allow, uh, elects to go with the leg of McManus over Russell Wilson on fourth and five. You're Russell Wilson. How's that sit with you? Well, not well. Not well in any ball game, particularly a game of this magnitude when you're coming back home and the emotions and everything that he obviously felt coming into this game and throughout the ball game and the... 12s the way that they were responding to him so i was surprised by it we were caught off guard with the timeout like everybody we couldn't quite understand right. why they were letting so much time come off the clock they went with mcmanus and that was the decision then that hackett made that he trusted mcmanus's leg more than he trusted russell wilson being able to convert there on fourth down and and that will be heavily dissected as we move through the week and it won't sit well with uh, russell wilson typically when you're in that position whether it's Tucker or any kicker, there's no time left. It's not like, you know, the clock was winding down. There's well outside of 30 seconds. They have three timeouts. Right. It's fourth and five. The ball's outside the 45-yard line. You're going, wait, you're going to let this run down. And it was shocking. They, they didn't have to try this desperate field goal. And this is why you make a deal to get Russell Wilson, in my estimation. I think Nathaniel Hackett's going to be a great head coach. And that's going to be a great marriage going forward. But this this is a weird ending to this game, to, to say the least. Brandon McManus missing a 64-yard field goal wide left with 20 seconds to go in the game. Sports Center all night, ESPN Radio. Of course, plenty of reaction coming up all morning, starting with KJ and Max, 6 to 10 Eastern time here on ESPN Radio. Dak Prescott. We know his sideline for a month and a half, possibly two months. Cooper Rush now slated to get the start for the Dallas Cowboys. Tough week one injury. Prescott has now had his surgery. ESPN analyst Mina Kimes, what's it all mean now for the Cowboys? Candidly, I don't think it matters. Um, you know, you never want to say point. never, never in, in the NFL, especially coming off of this weekend with some of those wild results. But... Uh, just simply put, this is not a good football team. Ooh. They weren't a good football team with Dak Prescott. We saw that on display because of the lack of depth, protection issues, uh, the skill players are not up to par. I thought the defense played fine, but it's not a championship caliber defense, the likes mm -hmm. of which can support an offense like this. And you take an offense like that uh, and you put in a backup quarterback, whether it's Cooper Rush or someone else from around the league, and I don't see them winning many games. Look, the next part of the schedule is soft. So mm -hmm. it is you know, possible that they could pull out a few, even with Rush or a backup quarterback from somewhere else. But when Dak Prescott comes back, do I see them contending in the division? Not really, frankly. Dallas, the only team in the division not to win in week one. Sports Center all night, ESPN Radio. Meanwhile, in Pittsburgh, there are still questions about the prognosis for T.J. Watt, ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. Nothing firm yet. They're trying to determine the severity of his pec injury. Is it a full tear? Is it maybe somewhat of a partial tear that he could play through? Those are some of the issues they're working through, including surgery. Like if he's going to have surgery, it certainly jeopardizes his season. But there's a hope and a